One of the other things is kind of coming back in the market is distressed assets right now. So I wanted to talk a little bit about like foreclosures, how that process works, what short sales look like. Because I know, I think Chris was looking at some foreclosures, Jasmine was looking at some short sales, and there's buyers out there who don't really understand how it works. Mm -hmm. So when they go on Zillow and they see auction or foreclosed or uh, what's the other one, pre-foreclosure, what all those different things mean is important. So when someone's in a home and they stop paying their bills, after 30 days, it's fine. After 60 days, they didn't get reported to the credit bureau. And it's now a notice and it becomes public knowledge as well that you're late on your mortgage. Zillow picks up all that information um, from the credit bureau wherever it's published because it's public knowledge that you missed your mortgage payments. That's when they then label them as pre-foreclosures. A foreclosure process typically takes about two years to happen and sometimes maybe five, six to seven years to happen because there's multiple different routes. When, when the owners get into a foreclosure situation, they get behind, they start thinking about bankruptcy. Bankruptcy typically will halt that process for two years. So people get behind on their mortgage for whatever reason, death, whatever, uh, things happen. They file for bankruptcy, that will halt that process for typically two years at a time. You go through a bankruptcy process, a lot of times you'll get a, a stay on your mortgage. Like I know of someone right now who hasn't paid their mortgage payments since 2006. It just went to foreclosure and went to auction last week. That's 12 years they lived in a house and didn't pay a darn penny of the mortgage. They paid their property tax, but didn't pay their mortgage bill. 12 years. Wow. So when they, these people see pre-foreclosure on Zillow, you look them up, you just let them know the situation. Hey, this is a situation. They haven't made payment in probably 60 days. This is just Zillow's way of saying, hey, this is public knowledge. Now, it might be a, a good opportunity if you're an investor to reach out to them incognito and say, hey, uh, I represent some cash buyers uh, who are looking for homes for sale in your neighborhood. Do you know of anyone who might be thinking about selling? Indirectly asking them, you know, what's your situation? Are you thinking about selling? So that's pre-foreclosure. Once it gets to the process where they can no longer, well, let, let's actually back up for a second. So maybe they're in a situation where they had a death in the family, uh, somebody lost their job, or they had an illness. So they could possibly apply for what's called a short sale. Short sale meaning they owe more on that home than it's worth. So they owe 300 on a house that's worth 250 Maybe because they took a loan out on the house and they got a, a lot of these people get in trouble with a second mortgage. They'll take an equity line out, they'll blow it on whatever, they won't pay it, uh, the property will de decrease in value, they won't make any updates, and all of a sudden their house is worth 250 and they owe 300 on it. So at that point you can go to the bank and say, hey, I, I am in a financial situation. Um, will you take the loss and can I sell my home? For 250, I know 300. I will take the $50,000 loss. Right now, uh, if the bank were to agree to that, you're going to pay tax on that $50,000 loss. Uh, when the economy was bad, it was free and clear. Now, the short sale process is a long, stringent process. It's awful. So when you apply for a short sale, the bank's going to ask for a ton of documents. When I say a ton, I mean everything. They want to know exactly why. And what it really boils down to is there's really three things that allow you to get approved for a short sale. Somebody died. Your primary breadwinner in the family died. Someone got deathly ill or lost their job or you became injured, medical, injured, you can't work. Those are really the three things that will possibly get you approved for a short sale. Everything else is garbage. If you say, hey, I suck at paying bills and I spend all my money at the club or whatever, that doesn't matter. They'll drag it out for a year or two and you won't get your short sale approved. So, when, they put, when these agents put these homes up for short sale, it'll be the crazy low price and it'll, they'll offer a COBRA. So what happens in that process is they're going to collect offers this entire time. So they're collecting offers from you and they might say, hey, we got a deal. Uh, the sellers agreed to that, we have a deal. Nobody has a deal until the bank says, hey, yes, we have a deal. And that process there takes a year, typically, um, for the bank to say, yeah, we, we have a deal on that. So during that entire time, you might think you have a deal with your short sale buyer. Your buyer might think they have a deal at, say, $250,000 on, on what you view as a $300,000 home. In that entire time, they're not telling you they're taking six, seven, eight, nine, ten other offers and presenting it to the bank. So what typically happens is at any time during a short sale process, you can pull out. You can say, hey, I'm out of the process. I'm fine. You don't owe them a dime at that process. Everything's contingent upon the short sale getting approved. What happens nine times out of ten is they don't get approved for it, the short sale. Um, most agents, we don't really have any real short sale agents in our market. Maybe Ken Woods might be one. 
but there's probably five people who really know what they're doing in the short sale arena. Um, most of these have no clue, um, and they're just listening to the bank. So nine times out of ten, it won't get approved. When it does get approved, you'll come up to say closing table and say, "Hey, we got a closing date for this house. Um, two fifty. They, they were planning on two fifty because that's what the contract signed at." And then you'll hear two three days prior to closing, "Hey, we don't have a deal. Uh, the, the bank wants two eighty. Um, by the way, you're not getting paid. Uh, they don't want. They don't. They're not paying any commission." on the price is 280. So that's what happens a lot of times, and then the buyer looks and just pissed off. Um, because they're not paying 280 for it, you're pissed because you did all this work and now you're not getting paid. They don't have money to compensate you. It's a nightmare. Very rarely do you see these things go through at the price you agreed on and still get paid. So most times, I'll just tell my buyer straight up, this is the situation, it could take a year, it could take a year and a half, there's a good chance you're not gonna get this house at that price, there's a great chance they're not gonna be approved for it, because in this economy, the bank doesn't wanna take a loss, because they'll take their asset back, they'll fix up and sell for more money, so why are they gonna do that? So they're doing everything in their power not to approve you for a short sale, because they don't wanna do it. Why are they gonna take a loss? <clears throat> That's short sale process, so unless you actually have to, you have somebody who's like, yeah, I'll just put the offer in, if we close on it later, great, an investor is perfect, because they don't care. The money's sitting there. If they get the house, that deal, awesome, but don't do any work on it. Other than that, they suck. Uh, foreclosures. So then once the bank decides, hey, we're foreclosing on your property, um, they'll then take the home and they'll send it to the sheriff's sale. Um, at the sheriff's sale, pretty much everyone gets discharged besides number one person that gets paid is any federal liens at property taxes, followed by the first lien holder, being your primary mortgage. Your second, third, fourth, all your mechanical liens get discharged at that process, and it's then sold on the, the auction steps to the highest bidder. So this starts at two-thirds of the assessed value. That doesn't mean the price it's going to start at. The bank's going to be there. If two fifty is owed or three hundred is owed on the $250,000 house, they'll put the house up and be up for auction. 220 starting bid, bank, right off the bat, three hundred, because they're paying themselves. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to come in, and maybe that first lien holder is actually only owed like 240 maybe the house is worth 300 and it starts at 240 maybe that's your opportunity to come in and say 241 keep in mind you can't see that house prior to making that bid and it's cash um, because you can't get a loan on something you can't get inside of so it's cash or private money 10 percent is required at the time of share sale cash money um, so that's how it's then auctioned off at the county steps that'll also show up on zillow as a foreclosure or an auction typically auction just meaning it's going to the sheriff sale you can't get in these properties. You're not getting paid on these properties as an agent. You're, these are cash buyers, people who cannot go in, and the banks are going to be there to bid whatever is owed on that mortgage. After they take the property back, then it's anyone's game. What happens after an asset manager then takes their property back is they put all their assets in, and then there's the CDO market. So this is big Wall Street thing where they, they, they take a bunch of pool of assets, and they'll swap them around. They'll trade them for whatever. They'll sell these pool of assets off to Fannie Mae or Wells Fargo. So if Huntington takes an asset back, there's a good chance they're not going to be the ones selling it. They're going to sell it off in a pool of assets for whatever the Midwest to uh, Wells Fargo for a, a, a package of money. So usually after they take the house back, plan anywhere from six to two six months to two years for that house to come to market. So once it then goes to your servicer, the servicer then has foreclosure agents uh, in the area. Foreclosure agents are people who have been vetted by the banks. It's not a glamorous job. The job sucks being a foreclosure agent because you have to go into your pocket typically about $20,000 every three months because you have to foot all the bills. You're paying for utilities. You're paying to change the locks out. You're uh, doing the cleaning fees. Anything that's left there, you're footing those bills and you're hoping to get reimbursed at closing. There's a crap load of paperwork you have to fill out to get reimbursed, and most times you'll get mm, 50 cents on the dollar of what you spent on them. Well, then what's the point of going Because you can get 100 of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. It's a hell of a lot of work. Yeah. That's why these foreclosure agents are so pissed off all the time. Because yeah. this is what they deal with. When you talk to foreclosure agents, they're just constantly grumpy. This is why. This is what they have to deal with. Mm -hmm. So when they put these houses up for sale, they have to have three brokers come out and do what's called a BPO, broker price opinion. So they have three agents come out. Um, these are all people who registered as a BPO agent. They get paid $25 to $30 to go do these. Um, they'll go out, they'll take photographs of it, and then you'll fill out mm -hmm. about 45 minutes worth of paperwork for 30 bucks. And you'll submit it to the bank, and then it'll be your broker opinion of price, what it should be at. So typically, they'll take those three BPOs, they'll come up with a price for that asset, they'll then list it with that agent, and it'll then be marketed like a typical home. 
Uh, that's where it'll show up in your MLS searches. A normal home, you nine times out of ten won't really even know it's a foreclosure unless they list it as HUD or uh, agent owner bank owned. So that's kind of the steps to distress assets, and I think that's super important when we're sharing it with buyers because buyers want to know that. And if you're able to convey that to them, like they they automatically feel like you know something. Sure. Uh, if you're able to tell them the exact process, so I think that's super important, um, especially in this market where we're starting to see more and more of those. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions?